We've gone from black and white to color and from networks to streaming. And what exactly are rabbit ears? Let's talk about TV. From radio to TV. TV has actually been around a lot longer than you might think. Scientists worked on the development of the television in the late 19th century with the goal of harnessing radio waves to create walking and talking images. This was more of a pursuit of science than entertainment. Philo Taylor Farnsworth was only 21 when he developed the first electric TV in 1927. By the 1930s, TV sets were available to the public, but you had to fork over some serious cash to buy one. Most folks of the era still relied on the radio for entertainment. After World War II, TVs went from a luxury piece of technology to a vital source of communication. Yet in the 50s, TVs were still not a fixture in every home, unlike today. A common model went for around $130, which would be about $1,500 today. And this was not some fancy HD smart TV. Demand for televisions increased into the 60s as people looked to them as not only a source of entertainment, but as a source of news. Historic events like the moon landing were now being watched in living rooms. Sporting events, sitcoms, soap operas, and game shows were a big part in the rise in television viewership. Into the 80s, programming became available around the clock, which meant that the TV could be on 24-7. Before this, many channels would go off the air at midnight and you'd be left watching a test pattern. By the 1990s, 98% of American households owned a TV. And now, most households have multiple TVs. TV sets. In the early days, all TV broadcasts were in black and white. In 1951, color broadcasting became possible for exactly 12 television sets across America. But only two years later, color broadcasting became an option for anyone with a color TV. Still not that common since color TVs were more expensive than the black and white models. Color used to be a bonus feature, kind of like we think of 8K resolution today. In the mid-60s, stations started advertising top-of-the-line color broadcasts in a battle for ratings. And by the 70s, color TV became the norm. Remember when you'd actually have to get up off the couch to change the channel? No? Well, TVs were operated with a series of knobs and buttons. Today, you probably have 10 remotes lined up on your coffee table for the TV and all the other devices attached to it. With Apple TV, your phone can even become the remote. That is, if it's not lost between the couch cushions. Ever wonder why the TV is sometimes called the tube? Early TVs actually used a vacuum tube containing electron emitters that reflected images onto a fluorescent screen. The result was a big boxy TV set that looks huge compared to today's standards. The next evolution was to go big with a rear projection TV that used similar tube tech. Now the demand is for thinner screens and high-definition picture. Common TVs today are anywhere from 46 to 72 inches, whereas in the 90s, 45 inches was considered massive. And back in the day, those big screen TVs could weigh as much as a hippo. TV programming. It used to be that all TV broadcasts were live. Broadcasting required complicated equipment that wasn't easy to move around. Some of the first broadcasts to reach a mass audience included a speech by Harry Truman and Queen Elizabeth's coronation ceremony. Now, live TV mostly consists of sporting events, awards shows, and breaking news. The Queen's Messenger, the first ever television drama, was adapted from a radio play and aired on the limited number of TVs that existed back in 1928. Imagine if dramas like Downton Abbey were filmed like that now. No chance for a take two. TV broadcasting created new genres based on when certain demographics were most likely to be watching. Game shows, talk shows, and soap operas have been the cornerstone of daytime television since the 50s. 
Before specialty channels, Saturday morning cartoons kept the kids occupied from the early weekend hours until noon. After school specials and reruns defined a generation. Prime time, the few hours reserved for evening television viewing, has always been the most coveted time slot. In the 1960s, shows like I Dream of Jeannie and Gilligan's Island were really popular. In the 90s, iconic sitcoms like Seinfeld and Friends were must-watch TV. As television evolved and audiences became more sophisticated, content pivoted from light entertainment and instead became a place for serious drama. In 1999, HBO launched The Sopranos, a milestone in TV history. The medium of TV began to be used to tell stories with psychological depth. Unlike a two-hour movie, audiences spend time with characters over the course of seasons. On the flip side, reality TV gave insight into the lives of celebrities at a time before social media, with shows like The Simple Life with Paris Hilton and Nicole Richie. Kris Jenner got her inspiration from these shows and launched her family into the public eye with Keeping Up with the Kardashians. Now Kim, Kylie, and the gang are major celebrities. Due to streaming, there is a lot of money in TV. High production prestige shows like Game of Thrones and The Crown cause people to binge watch because whole seasons are dropped at once. Although recently, streaming services are reverting to a traditional model and dropping only one episode a week to keep people coming back for more. From VCR to streaming. In the 1980s and into the 90s, the video cassette recorder, better known as the VCR, changed TV history. For the first time, you were able to record broadcast television onto a tape that you could watch later. You might tape the big game or the finale to your favorite show and hope no one would spoil it before you got a chance to watch. You'd also hope you didn't accidentally tape over your wedding. VCR Tech also allowed you to watch movies at home for the first time. The novelty of rewinding, fast-forwarding, and the ability to hit pause and grab a snack is something we take for granted now. This went along with the requisite trip to Blockbuster to find a movie to rent. DVDs were the next step in the home theater experience, offering a clearer picture and behind-the-scenes features. Blu-ray uses basically the same tech, but the discs have a higher capacity, which means better picture quality. On-demand viewing was also popular at one point, which meant you could rent movies and TV shows from your cable company. The PVR and DVR were huge innovations because you could record shows in a digital format. So long to all those clunky videotapes. Streaming renders basically all of this recording tech obsolete because all the content you could ever want is accessible with an internet connection. You can be the ultimate couch potato and watch TV all day, or you can watch on the go on your phone and never have to worry about missing a thing. The Big Three Networks NBC and CBS have been butting heads since the 1920s when they functioned as radio broadcasters. When TV became the next big thing, they pivoted into the new medium, taking their rivalry with them. At one point, viewers were at the whim of what the network execs thought would bring in the most advertising dollars, and choice was limited on the only TV in the house. If the Beverly Hillbillies was on that evening, that's what the family would watch. Now there are more platforms which host a wide array of content and more devices available to watch on. The 40s marked the founding of ABC, another big network powerhouse who threw their hat in the ring. They've come a long way. ABC is now owned by the Disney Company. But in the age of streaming, is network TV a dying breed? Their bread and butter is live sports and talent shows like The Voice and Dancing with the Stars. Even then, primetime viewership is on a steady decline. The saving grace is that these big three broadcasters still own the distribution rights to our most beloved shows. 
Shows like The Office or Parks and Recreation are owned by NBC, for example, and are licensed at a hefty fee to stream on Netflix. When you have access to content whenever and wherever, less and less people are watching shows when they first air on TV. Broadcast Systems If you told a kid now that TVs once had rabbit ears, their first thought would probably be of holding their fingers behind someone's head before snapping a selfie. Rabbit ears were slang for the television set's antenna, and if the signal was weak, you'd be drawing straws to determine who would have to get off the couch and fiddle with them. TV viewers didn't have much of a choice as to what to watch, either. Up until the late 70s and 80s, viewers could only watch the limited channels that your terrestrial antenna could receive. Satellite TV came along and helped broaden channel choice big time. Some people still have a dish mounted on the side of their house, which communicates with a satellite in space, which then transmits images onto the TV. Satellite provides a wider range of channels and was very expensive at first. Customers had to pay for the dish, plus all the individual channels. But in the 80s, you could start paying a flat rate and get access to all the content your heart desired. Cable is another innovation that provided choice in TV viewing. Almost too much choice, in fact. At first, cable was a luxury. Today, the technology allows for a very wide range of content. Cable TV ushered in an era of highly specified content that could cater to absolutely anyone. Smart TVs and subscription-based streaming have taken this to the next level. Again, the choice is endless. From the family-friendly Disney Plus to the grittier offerings of HBO, each platform has something different, which means you'll probably end up subscribing to all of them. Or you'll at least share several accounts among family and friends to cover your bases. Because of the choice these platforms provide, and because there are no ads, cable has become less popular. Cable even seems like a relic of the past for many millennials and Gen Zers who watch most of their TV online anyway. Viewership is plummeting for live TV. If anything groundbreaking happens, people will just catch the highlights on YouTube. The Future of TV the way we watch TV is fairly new, especially since the concept of TV has been around for only a century. We've gone from black and white to color, and even 3D TV exists if you're willing to foot the bill and watch through goofy glasses. VR technology is getting more sophisticated every day and could one day allow you to become involved in the shows you watch. Imagine hanging out in New York City with Carrie Bradshaw and friends, or taking a trip with Captain Kirk on the Starship Enterprise. There is little doubt that the experience of watching TV will change again as the years go by. There is this idea that people will want more TV on their phones while on the go, but after the epic failure of Jeffrey Katzenberg's brainchild Quibi, phone viewing doesn't seem as popular as some thought. The experience of sitting down to watch a show is still desirable, only more people watch alone now, with most households having TVs in almost every room. The community has turned online, though, with fans live tweeting their reactions to the latest Euphoria or Succession episode. You may be watching TV alone in your room, but you can always hop online to see what other fans are saying. Odds and Ends Did you know that frozen meals were invented because of the rise of television? Hence the term TV dinners. We've all seen shows with laugh tracks, right? Well, this humorous soundscape is thanks to one man, Charles Douglas. He created the Laugh Box, an instrument of sorts that uses a repertoire of recorded laughs to create the most desirable laugh for any joke. Laughs used in shows like The Brady Bunch are still used today in shows like The Big Bang Theory. And did you know that annually Americans watch a staggering 250 billion hours of TV? So don't count TV out just yet. 
Thanks for watching. Your support matters. Hit the like button, click on another great video, and help us grow by subscribing to our channel.